Okay, I'm back with my brother Hashim here. Yeah. And uh, last week he promised me, JC, we're gonna debate on the prophethood of Mohammed. Can I? Well, you said yes. That's fine, that's fine. I saw the recording. So, the topic right now, I'm asking my brother Hashim, is Mohammed prophesized in the Bible? And whether Mohammed is a true prophet or not? It will be his burden to prove to us whether Mohammed or where Mohammed is prophesied in the Bible, not just not just the Torah, but also in the Injil, the New Testament. Okay, okay. And to quote one of my favorite Christian apologies, and uh, Anthony Rogers, to find Mohammed in the Bible, he's like trying to find pork in a halal restaurant. Simply impossible. So it will be his burden to prove to us where Mohammed is prophesied in the Bible or not. Okay. That's a very bad uh, analogy. And, 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 and Comparing and restaurants to Bibles and the no, holy books. Story. Anyway. Alright, with regards to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa being prophesied in the Bible. So no. That's the that's that's main two yeah. topics of the of discussion. So whenever you see Hashim discussing about the Trinity, whether Jesus is God or why three is one, that's that's not the topic of discussion. So whenever you do whenever he's doing that, it's simply because he's on the ropes. No problem. Basically, he's trying to say, don't discuss the Trinity. I've had enough of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no problem. All right, let's let's open um, Deuteronomy 18. 18. 18. Come on. 18, 16. Ah, okay, even better. Yeah. <laughs> 18, 16 to 18. I don't know the best way. So you got your Bible on you? I don't know the best way. So go ahead. Turn, turn, turn. You don't have the Bible on you again. I got an app. Oh my God. What are you telling me? No problem. Okay, let's read in the Bible from Deuteronomy 18, verse 16 onwards. It says here, For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, or we will die. Okay, so this is what the request of the Jewish people was that they should not hear the voice of God again and then we see in verse 17 the Lord said to me what they say is good I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites and this is by the way the NIV I think the KJV has your brethren a prophet like you from your brethren he will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. Remember, he says here, prophet, prophet, prophet. At no point did he say, my son, or my, or the Lord, or God, or whatever it is. The, the clear emphasis here is on the term prophet of God. Okay? And then God himself says, I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words, that the prophet speaks in my name. Yes? But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name, anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in, in the name of other gods, is to be put to death. Okay? There we go. So this is the question now with regards to, I'm, I'm assuming you understand the Bible. Whom is this prophecy about? Jesus Christ. Okay. What's Jesus? By the way, don't, 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 don't. Don't, don't, don't go, don't go into it's a dialogue. It's, it's a dialogue. Okay, but how is this? How that will happen? Yeah, that's what I'm asking you. I'm, I'm going to have um, a two and four for dialogue with regards to that. Now, you, uh, you said this is prophet. Yeah. Sorry, this is Jesus. Because you made the claim, I want to know on what basis you say this is Jesus. Listen, I'm not here to prove to you that that's Jesus. Huh? Your burden is to prove to us, yes, I me, will. I will. that that's Mohammed. But you claimed already that so it's Jesus. Listen, no, no, I, I, don't, I don't have to prove that that's Jesus. Okay, fair enough. First and foremost, Jesus, according to them, is a God. Yes? What was the request of the Jewish which God granted? That they should not hear the voice of God ever again. Yes? Was Jesus a God? According to the, them, yes, he's 100% God. So even when he was this second person of the Trinity, which came to earth, he was still 100% God. So when he spoke, did, this, did they hear a man or did they hear God? That is a question that I need to ask you. In order to you, in order for you to maintain your claim that this is Jesus. So when I'm Jesus is saying that's Jesus, when bro. Jesus was speaking, you have to you have to prove to that's Mohammed. No, no, not me, I that's, just that's told you, I just told you it cannot be Jesus because first and foremost, if Jesus was God, 
And if God speaks, Again, then this is... Where you see God or no, bro? You're, you're we're talking about if that's what happens. I'm giving you the proof. Get in here. The problem is that God told us, basically made with the Jewish people, is that they will not hear his voice. And they will, will yes? raise up from the among their, be, their brethren, their brothers. Yes, from their so brethren. A fellow Israelite, no, a fellow Arabian no, no, hold on, hold on. The fellow Israelite, that's in the NIV, in the KJV, there's no mention of fellow Israelite. It is as brethren. per what? The brethren of the Jewish people. I'll give you the KJV version. I've got it here somewhere. Okay, two problems we have, if that is Jesus. Number one is that, if he is God, then when he spoke, they heard the voice of God. And number two, if God spoke publicly at the baptism of Jesus, yes, then what is, why is that, doesn't that tell us that God is going back on his promise, that they will not hear his voice again? Because during the baptism of Jesus, what happened? They heard the voice of God, did they not? Did they not hear his voice? That he is my beloved son. So did God break his promise, which was given in in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 16. I'm sorry, chapter, six, uh, chapter 18, verse 16. In, 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 that, in that particular chapter, God gave his promise that they'll not hear his voice, his voice again. But during the baptism of Jesus, they heard his voice. Did the God of the Bible break his promise? The only way this makes sense is that if this is the brethren of the Israelites, which means Isaac and Ishmael were brothers. The Arabs take the descendants. Do you mind if I finish? Thank you. It's a dialogue. Yeah, if it's a dialogue. You didn't want me to have a dialogue. You wanted me to make the points. I'm making my point. They were brothers. They were half brothers. No, they're not half brothers. Isaac. And we're half brothers. Isaac. Wait a minute. Isaac. Ishmael was was Isaac and Ishmael. The father was Abraham. Of that slave. Yes. The father was Abraham. Hagar was was Hagar the wife of Abraham? According to the Bible? No. No? 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 You should read the Bible again then. Because Hagar, according to the Bible, is very clearly stated in the Bible you that she was his wife. God is saying that she was his wife in the Bible. And if you say otherwise, then you have to deal it with God. But anyway, going back to that, the Arabs trace that descent, uh, their basic ancestry from Ishmael, and the Jewish people trace their ancestry from Isaac. Okay? Isaac and Ishmael were both the sons of Abraham. And this is what the brethren that is mentioned here. From amongst your brethren, very clearly. So two things we see, amongst your brethren and that they will not hear the voice of God again. So unless the, unless the Christians are telling me that God broke his promise that they will not hear his voice during the baptism and also during while Jesus is speaking, then yes, you can take that up with your Bible as a contradiction. Right now, I got a very clear point here that anyone who is basically a prophet to come after Jesus, after Moses, who was basically the brethren of the Jewish people, that is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is one evidence. I'll show you another evidence. Okay, wait, which no, is, don't, 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 don't over there. Wait, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me rebut that. Yeah. You are going to rebut it now? I'm okay, go on. go on. Please. Okay. I'd like to hear his point. Basically, this same passage that you quoted, Deuteronomy 18, essentially condemns Muhammad as a false prophet. Let me tell you why. 1820 says, but a prophet who presumes to speak in my name, anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods is to be put to death. Why is this relevant? According to the most authentic Muslim sources, Muhammad apparently was deceived by an evil spirit where he was told that it was okay to pray to Alad, Alusa, and Manat, three pagan goddesses. And then after we said, oh, the devil tricked me. So if you're gonna take that as a criteria to authenticate his prophethood, you just simply condemn him. Because this same, this same passage condemns him as a false prophet because he told his followers that it was okay to pray to three pagan goddesses. Who said that, Muhammad said? No, come on, come on. Who said to pray to pagan gods? Are you asking me if you don't know? Yeah, I'm asking you the question. I'm asking you the question. Listen, what is the evidence you. that he said to pray to pagan okay, gods? Okay, so you're you, you asking me the evidence because you don't know. I give you the evidence from the Bible. You give Hold me the evidence second. from the Quran Hold or from no, the Hadith. I'm asking you something. No, you made a claim. So yes. The honest is on you. It's all the evidence. I'm more than happy. But I'm actually asking you. Are you asking me because you don't know? I'm asking you. Or because you know? And you want to prove me I'm asking you to prove what you claim. That's all I'm asking. Right. So you don't know, basically. I don't know. I don't know, so I need to prove yes. it to you. Yes, please prove it to me. And make sure it's an authentic source. By the way, he said, Muhammad said to pray to the pagan gods. 
Allah wal Uzza, which is in the Quran, Allah gives a clear answer that they were basically not gods. They were the names created as de they were deities who basically your forefathers created as gods to believe in. Very clearly in the Quran, you don't even need to go elsewhere. But anyway, this is about not the not saying the prophethood of Muhammad is being false. It says the verse in Deuteronomy says he will be put to death. The false prophet will be put to death. Who was put to death? Jesus or Muhammad? Yes. yes. Who death? was put to death? You Muhammad tell me. Be put to death. You tell me who was put to death. And he delivered. No, I didn't ask you who and should and be put to death. That revelation about praying to three pagan goddesses. Jason. At the time, had he lived at the time of Moses, Moses would tell the people to put it to put it. Was to Muhammad to put to death? Was he put to death? Yes or no? There you go. Your silence says it all. Also, Jesus Listen. was tempted by the devil as well, wasn't Sorry, it? Sorry, yeah. Jesus was taken to the yeah, mountains the by the devil, by, by the, the Satan. Satan. The, the For 40 off. days. Not one day. 40, 40 days. days yeah. But anyway, that's a different topic. I want you to read about what points I made. The two points I made was not to hear God's voice again, which you haven't even touched upon. And the second thing is the brethren. Okay, talk much. al Tabari says, the following. Al Tabari, you can see that Al Tabari is authentic. Al Tabari, oh, I see. You think Tabari is all authentic? Okay, that's not my. He doesn't care. So he doesn't care about authenticity. You don't follow Al Tabari. You guys follow Al Tabari. Yeah, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna why don't you ask us if it's, if it's authentic? Al Tabari is a collection of narrations from both authentic and unauthentic sources. The messenger of God was eager for the welfare of his people and wished to effect a reconciliation with them in whatever he, he could. It is said that he wanted to find a way to do this. And what happened was as follows. Ibn Humayt, Salama, Mohammed bin Ishaq, Yazid bin Siyad, Al Madami, Mohammed Kabal Al Quraisi. I'm mentioning all the all the narrators say, yeah? Okay, instead of the tell me what is the point where it says about the I, I know you're on the road. The, 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 the I'm, God. I'm, I'm coming to that, bro. Yeah, go on. I'm coming to that, bro. Be patient. When the messenger when the messenger of God saw how his tribe turned their backs on him and was grieved to see them shunning the message he had brought to them from God, he longed in his soul that something would come to him from God, which would reconcile him with his tribe. With his love for his tribe and eagerness for his welfare, it would have delighted him in some of the difficulties which they had made for him. If he could have been smoothed out. And he debated with himself and fervently desired such an outcome. Then God revealed by the star when he said, Your comrade does not err, nor is he deceived, nor does he speak out of his own desire. And when he came to the words, Have you thought upon Alad, Alusa, and Manad, the third or the other? Satan cast on his tongue, because in his inner debates, debates and what he desired to bring to, to his people, the words. These are the Alad, Alusa, Manad, three pagan goddesses, these are the, the high flying cranes. Verily, the intercession is accepted with approval. So essentially, Mohammed was telling the people that it was okay to pray to these to this three pagan goddesses because they, they were inter. I, I will come back to that. No, no, no. Tell me why he says that. Because they, they so were giving you a narrative. narrative they were inter what is it in there? Intercede with Allah. Oh. See what he does? Inter Show me where he says that. That he said to pray to the pagan gods. Because that was your claim. Show me that. He said. Where did he say that? I, did anyone when hear Kureishi, that? No. When Qureshi heard this, they rejoiced and were happy and delighted at the no, way. No, what did Muhammad in say? In which say he that, spoke of their words. In which he, Muhammad, spoke of their gods. No, what did he the say Kureishi about the Qureshi tribe were happy that Muhammad, right, spoke greatly good things about their gods. Right? Where did he say and they worship Al Tabari? Al Tabari is saying this. Wait a minute. I'm asking you, where did he say that? And they listen. Them? Listen, you're not praying with words to be inside. I'm not right? praying words. I'm asking you, where did he say that? I didn't hear it. Did anyone and else they, hear it? And they listened to him. Absolutely and not. And they listened to him, Mohammed. Anyway, he doesn't want While to tell the us. Muslims have a complete trust in their prophet in respect of the messages which he brought from God, did not, did not suspect him of error, illusion, or mistake. When, when he, Mohammed, came to the prostration, having completed the surah, he prostrated himself and the Muslim did likewise, following the Prophet, trusting in the message which he had brought and following his example, those, those polytheists of the Quraysh and others who were in the most 
Likewise, prostrated themselves because they saw the prophet doing the same thing. This is a waste of time. Because at the, you know what we are trying to do here? We are trying to establish the prophecy so of Muhammad. Clear, it's quite clear Jesse, that Muhammad was, I let you talk was, without was, trying, was trying to win the tribe, the, no, the, the, no, the no, pagan tribe. That wasn't the case. So the only the, way he the can point, reconcile... The point we are trying to establish here is the prophet to the pagans say, Bible. listen, it's okay to pray to Allah, Alusa, Amanat. Right? Three praying goddesses. It didn't say the that. Pagans, you, you made that up. The pagans, it didn't say that well, at all. In fact, you did not. What you're doing now is instead of establishing Where Muhammad the Muhammad brought a revelation from God, cancelling what Satan had cast on his tongue of his, of his prophet, right? Muhammad has repented of what he said concerning the position of your God with God, of your pagan gods with God and has altered it and brought something else okay. you know what you're doing here you're going so, away from the topic we're discussing which is the prophethood of muhammad in the bible I, Can, wait, wait, you know you know what i thought let me ask you know what i thought you see let me ask you you appeal you appeal to the you what you have done here you appeal to the deuteronomy to authenticate the prophethood of muhammad in the bible and he used the deuteronomy even in tabari he was not able to show us where muhammad said to worship the three pagan gods like he said in Tabri, we did not read that. By the way, this is what the Quran says. This is what the Quran says about Allah Waluzza. This is in chapter 19, verse 22, Surah al Najm. It says, Have you seen Lat and Uzza and another third goddess, Manat? What? For you, the male sex, and for him, the female? Behold, such would be indeed a division most unfair. These are nothing. Listen to this, Jesse. I know you're busy on your phone, but you need to listen to the dialogue. Yeah. These are nothing but the names which you have devised. You and your fathers. This is God speaking to the pagans. Which you and your fathers for which Allah has sent down no authority. Allah has sent down no authority. They follow nothing but conjecture which their own souls desire. Even though there has already come to them guidance from their Lord. Now you see how clear it is in the Quran. We don't need to go on Tabari to history of Islam or to anything else when it comes to believing well, in the pagan well, gods. It doesn't suit you, of stop, course. You, you stop interrupting when I finish it. You got to dismiss Tabari, bro. Have the distance in between. Not interrupting. I didn't interrupt you when you were doing it. Okay? So by the way, the Quran is clear. We don't need to go anywhere else. Our primary source says that, that these are nothing but names which you have devised. You and your forefathers, for which Allah has sent down no authority. Very clear in the Quran. So whatever you are basically trying to battle with regards to history of Tabari, it makes no sense. Because for us, that is the primary source. Everything else is secondary. Anyway, what he read from there, nowhere did Muhammad say go and prostrate or worship to Al-Ma'ad, al uh, al uzza and Al-Manat. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 16, 18, which he has an answer yet. Why did God say to the Jewish people that they will not hear his voice again? And yet, during the baptism of Jesus, they heard his voice. Are you able to answer that question, Jesse? The polytheists were delighted uh, you answer that? that Muhammad at last approved of their gods, their are, pagan are you gods. The question? So Muhammad approved he of their gods. He did not approve anything. The Quran Bro, is clear. The, the Quran it's, is clear. It's, 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 it's that black these and white. Are you in a Muhammad? Hold on. According to Al-Tabari, which is 